when high schoolers are taking out college national champs like it's nothing, we, we got to talk about it. Now, I don't know how many high schoolers actually beat a national champion in history, but I know that the most, that the oldest one I, I guess I know of is Conor Mirasola beating Max Dean. And basically since that match, uh, we have two other high schoolers, Bo Bassett and Jax Forrest, to also take out college division one national champions while they're in high school regardless of everyone saying that their age is oh they're held back here whatever whatever these are still like less than 18 or less than 18 year olds beating guys graduate postgraduate of colleges i think anthony ashnell that's who bo bassett beat was 11 years older than him so when anthony won his ncaa title bo was in like third grade and yes i do think like earlier in my time i think even like i guess Kerry cole that rings a bell like he was so so good from a really young age but we're gonna go over bo bassett's match versus ashnell and then also jacks forrest versus nathan tomasello now we do want to give a shout to seth on youtube actually he's been breaking down a lot of these kind of just wrestling videos in general he has a great page so so if you guys want to check out his breakdown vids go check him out but let's hop into the bo bassett match he just wasn't in a position at all to meet this double head on. You want your elevation to be at the same level or lower than your opponent, and National clearly did not match Bo's level, let alone down block. Yeah, honestly, like the first time when I saw him take that shot, I was like, why did he take that shot? It wasn't even like necessarily a clean shot, but regardless, just the immediate attack in the first 10 seconds and Anthony Ashnault to not really even like defend it. He couldn't even have circled or down blocked. And it was just, I was just like, okay, how, how did, uh, how did Bo score there first? But I mean, regardless, it's, it's the constant attack and Anthony just had just had no no counter for it, and I was just very confused on how that even worked, especially for a guy on Ashnault's caliber. And actually, you know how Anthony was kind of going off the edge there, so Bo got another point for that. This is another reason why low leg shots from space without a tie up can be dangerous. There is no exit strategy. David Taylor and the like do a low leg, but mostly from tie ups. And if your opponent steps out of the shot, you can just go back to hand fighting, so you're safe and can attack again. Here, however, there's no way out. You just get stuck. Bo honestly just makes a killing off of front hand lock, and even when he's going in for the tie, his reaction time is just so fast that it doesn't even matter. And we're gonna see that here also towards the end of the match when he does this as well with the fast reaction time. Um, but regardless, we see Anthony here, he's going to score, but on basically his go behinds, that's just his bread and butter in high school. I mean, he does that fake, he does the head pull, goes into a go behind, but the match is going to continue here and he's going to rack up another, basically a leg lace, just a simple leg lace kind of jumps over the top there, almost like a low gut, but this is why you don't want to reach if you can help it, especially with both arms, because people can just drop under your arms and they'll have a clear path to a shot. When I was actually watching this back, I was like, okay, but why didn't you keep your head up on the shot? Isn't it known to keep your head up on the shot? But the more I thought about it, I was like, he was going to get stuffed if his head was up. So he had to get into the leg where honestly, Anthony's going to keep making this mistake where he tries to go for that little Dake bomb chest wrap. I don't know if it didn't work the first time, it probably wouldn't work again. And here he, Anthony's kind of doing, it's almost just like a lazy Russian turn. He needs way more hip pressure. And that's one thing that, you know, Seth was talking about in this video, but there was no pressure going back the other way, especially for a guy like Bo, who's just going to keep wrestling through these positions. I mean, it was clear that, I mean, at, once he got this takedown, it's like, that's guaranteed match. Like Anthony almost even looked tired at this point in the match, which was crazy. And I'm not sure how, you know, he wrestled 149 in college. This was 143. Minute left, Bo is caught reaching this time. And so Ashnall drops to his own random double, except he honestly looks tired at at this point isn't able to get too far with it. Bo is starting to slow down, sure, but Ashnall looks like he's dragging through mud. Bo snaps, his right arm disappears, and hooks behind Ashnault's left, and scoots around behind for the easy takedown. Yeah, ag again, like, that's that's easy match. I mean, Bo, with the go behind, he just slips that hand out of there where, where Anthony didn't get control of his elbow. Bo Bassett's gonna end up winning the match. Now I'm gonna tell you the number one reason why he was able to win that match, but first, let's watch this Jax match. About 30 seconds in, Tomasello goes for a random lefty single, though it looks more like a high crotch in motion. You know, it's a normal penetration step, which is weird. It's more of a fake, I guess, but he follows that right up for an underhook. Immediately after doing that, Jax ducks under for a beautiful fireman's carry. Feet to back, that's four points. What basically you're going to see is Tomasello's build is way shorter. He's more stockier. Jax is super long, and you can see, like, I mean, strong here, too. Goes collar tie with his left arm, looks away, and pulls the arm through for a sweet slide by. This slide by works so well when someone is pressuring into you. You can also do it after you down block. Say you have the right elbow, they shoot a righty high crotch, you down block with your left arm and then pull the elbow through. It's so slick. Jax gets behind, locks near leg and falls to the right to secure his takedown. It's crazy too because, you know, Tomaselli, again, national champ, but we can see just the height difference, the length difference, but Jax knows how to use this to his advantage. And just that, like, 
basically just pushing his head to the opposite side so he can work up to get into this, you know, crotch lock position here. He's just continuing wrestling, continuing to go into different positions. Now, Tomasello could have put that over his head. If he, I think if he put the leg over his head, he would have been in a way better position. And I think he was just tangled in here. But we look, we can see here, Jack's, his foot's still on the ground, even when Tomasello has his leg up. The height difference was insane. Jack's force just needed to get both feet on the ground and he goes in for the throw. And that's match. Like he teched him faster than Spencer Lee's match, I believe, when they faced off a couple of years ago. But what just what a performance. What a performance from Jax, getting this big win over a former national champion. Of course, it's different styles, but man, he was hyped up and I was it was crazy to see. And what I believe is to be the reason they're so good, it's steroids. <laughs> no, no, it's not. But one of the biggest differentiators in me just honestly just getting stronger is make sure I'm consuming enough protein throughout the day. And with that being said, I do want to give a shout out to my supplement sponsor. You guys know Rise Sups. Currently even drinking a rice fuel right now. Currently rocking here with the Cinnamon Toast Protein Powder. And if you guys like Cinnamon Toast Crunch, this is going to be right up your alley. This is insane. But of course, if you guys like things like pre-workout and creatine, I highly suggest you go get your stuff from Rise. And using code Caden, you save 15% off your order. So of course, that's saving your money. And it's a great way to support me and this channel so I can make more vids like this. So what I believe is to be the biggest factor of why these high schoolers can beat these college graduated national champions. It's everything to lose versus nothing to lose. This was a comment made actually by Mindset Mike I saw on Instagram when Flow Wrestling posted the video of Bo Teching National. And so really, what does that mean? Well, put yourself in the position, let's say, of the national champ. You're up there looking to qualify to wrestle to the Olympics, you know, for the Olympic trials, right? And let's say I am the national champion and I'm that matched up in the semifinal or final against, wow, I'm, I look, look, I'm like, okay, that's a high schooler. That's a high school kid. I, I should win this match. Wait, how did he make the finals? I'm, you know, nine years older than him, 11 years older. And it's like, okay, I should win this match, right? It's maybe it can be a little bit of overconfidence, but you think about your past accomplishments. I'm like, wow, in the past 11 years, I got a couple national titles, all American status, blah, blah, blah. The list goes on and on. But the high school kids and what Bo and Jack specifically, they don't necessarily care about that. They let it all hang loose. They empty the tank and they do work. It's believing in themselves so much that it doesn't matter what the other person has done. It's it's their time and that, that is what they believe. And you know how hard it is to beat a guy who thinks it's impossible for him to lose and who actually wrestles like it, who's legit not afraid of anything at all. And sure, I'm not saying that Anthony and Tomasello had this different mindset going in, but I'm just saying it's like the, if, if you're a college national champion, you shouldn't be losing to these guys, especially on the way your body develops. I'm like the biggest thing difference for me in high school to college was like just the vast, uh, I would say, strength of the college guys, it's, it's, it's unmatched to high school. And that was the biggest difference. And I'm like, I would completely tech myself. And of course, I'm like basing it off of, I guess, my personal experience. And maybe, you know, Jackson, Bo are, you know, different caliber guys. Like they are in their own rights, top dogs that we've ever seen in the sport. And yes, it's freestyle. It's not folk style. It's different in that sense. But regardless, wrestling is wrestling. And it looked like Bo and Jax really just dominated. And when you look at, I guess, Bo Bassett's final match, when he faced Kaladzic, Basically, he was just so much of just brute force that Bo just really had no answer for him. So if there's really one thing to take away from this video and kind of what this means for these high schoolers to beat college national champions, it's if they're doing it, why not you? Why can't you be the guy to say, hey, I'm not where I want to be, but soon I will be. And you have to you have to come up with ways how to make that happen. Are you going to be skipping practices? Are you going to be you know, eating out too much? Are you going to be wasting time scrolling on TikTok? Whatever that may be, everyone has their own vice in that sense. And some things have to be sacrificed in order to achieve the top level of success. So I encourage you guys to take a step back, look at your own life, look at your own performance and really digress and think, okay, where am I? But where do I need to be? And you can't just dream about that goal. You have to have an action plan, steps that you can actually do to get you closer to that goal. And if you do that and having an unwavering confidence in yourself, and one thing I would say from Bo and Jack, specifically is that both of them are pretty spiritually sound and following Jesus Christ and of course the teachings and by basically relating that you know to Aaron Brooks and his performance in the past years it's like he's wrestling with God's strength on his side and if you believe God the creator of the world is giving you all the strength and everything necessary for you to achieve you know what you set out to do that's 
pretty unbeatable. And of course, things happen. You know, Bo ended up not winning out the tournament. But you know, I'm not saying just believe in God and you're going to win all these matches. That's just, that's not how it works. But just even in my life alone, not only has it helped me in my wrestling, but just my overall life. Because competition doesn't last forever and there has to be a bigger meaning behind it. But thanks guys so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for the patrons supporting me over on there. And we'll see you guys next video. Screen off, you're on skate, rollin', rollin' with the gang, totally, totally, man, you shake, totally, totally.